Well, we've all been there, right? You're riding along, you're having a good time, and then boom. Next thing you know, you're laying on the ground on the way to the hospital. It's not a very fun thing, but it's gonna happen sometimes when you make a mistake and you buy the wrong bike. Sometimes you buy a bike that's just too low quality for you. And even though I feel like it's common knowledge that a high quality BMX bike is good and a low quality BMX bike is bad, I get comments on my videos every day from people like, well, this is a scam. I'm just gonna buy this $300 bike because it's the exact same. And no, you're wrong, it's not. But you know, you just, you can't fix some people, they're gonna learn on their own. But for you smart people, you people watching this right now who wanna know what the best quality BMX bike is, I've compiled a list. I've got a list right here of 11 BMX bikes, and these are the best bikes that money can buy right now. So let's get right into it. Let's figure out which bike is in spot number one. Now this video is arranged by chapters, so you can skip around to see, you know, you can skip around, like it's okay, no one's gonna hurt you if you skip around, it's fine. But what you should know is that if any of these bikes do catch your eye, there's a link in the description to a more in-depth review on it. I've reviewed every single bike on this list, and if you wanna watch an in-depth review about it, the link's in the description. These are just, I'm just gonna summarize these bikes, I'm gonna tell you some things you need to know about them and why they ended up on the list, and then you can go do your own research later. So bike number 11 is the We The People Trust. This is an interesting bike because it has lots of options. What you're gonna find out later on is that generally the more expensive bikes get, the less options you have, and I really don't like that because I feel like your bike, your colorway, like there's a bunch of different things that we use on our bike to kind of express ourselves. And when there's only one color option or one size option, they're really limiting the bike. So I love the We The People Trust because it has those different options. Now with those options, it's important to know that the sizes of these bikes and the drive type are connected. So the geometry on the We The People Trust Free Coaster is gonna be different than the geometry on the We The People Trust Cassette. And that includes top tube size differences, not just chain stay lengths, top tube sizes also. Now in both different variations, you do get to choose between a purple and raw colorway or a matte black with red and black tires. The dual color on the tires is pretty sick and the raw obviously looks amazing with the purple. This bike has a lot of high quality parts sprinkled in there from We The People, Saul, and Eclat. It just stands out. I really like the We The People Trust because there's hints of detail sprinkled in there that you're not gonna see on other bikes. The analogy I always use is that We The People bikes are kind of like the BMWs, the Mercedes, Mercedes, the Porsches um, of the car world, you know, whereas it's not the Chevy, it's not the Ford. There's some just things put in there that makes these bikes a little nicer than normal. The attention to detail is one of them. Now it's also you're paying for the name brand quite a bit, like I'm not gonna lie, these bikes are technically overpriced for the quality that you get, but there's hints of detail that are put into them like aftermarket parts and things that they include in the bikes that nobody else does, making them a really special bike. And the Trust is no exception. It's rolling on We The People Activate 100 PSI tires. If you get the free coaster version, you get the We The People Helix free coaster. Eclat tripping double wall rims, a sprocket with a bash guard, two pegs, four hub guards. Like I could go on and on about the quality that they put into this bike in their parts package. The We The People Trust is gonna cost you about $839 as of right now, and it scores a 7.2 in quality, putting it at number 11 on the list. So let's go ahead and talk about number 10, which scored the same quality as the Trust, but it's just a little bit better. So I'm not gonna lie, I was surprised to see number 10 on this list. It's the Sabrosa Malum, and it's only a $640 bike. This bike is very standard geometry, 13.2 inch chainstay, nine inch standover, 75 degree head tube angle. Like it's not specific or technical for any kind of riding. It's just a average reserve geometry frame, but it's a lot more affordable than the Trust. This bike comes in two different color options and one top tube size. It's a fairly light bike, but again, reserve geometry. It doesn't come with any pegs. It doesn't come with any hub guards, and there are very few aftermarket parts on this bike. The good thing about it is the core components, meaning the frame forks and handlebars are all full chromoly. So these are gonna withstand as you do big drops, as you crash, as you progress, and that's a good thing. One of my favorite things about this bike is the shadow interlock chain. I know it's kind of lame to get excited about a chain, but this is one of my favorite chains of all time. I've ridden it forever. Ever since I spent a way too much money on this stupid chain, I've had it, and I haven't broke one yet. 
knock on wood. It's rolling on shadow contender tires and rant party on wheels. Their uh, rant's not the best brand, but it's gonna be a little bit better than just stock, generic, non low tier aftermarket parts. And so you can't argue with that. Now what you're gonna find on the Malum is a lot of rant parts. So you're not gonna see very much shadow, you're not gonna see very much Sabrosa, even though it's Sabrosa, but the parts package is mostly gonna be rant, which are, again, like I said, it's not really the best, but it's a good core bike. So as you get this bike, you can upgrade it, you can make changes to it. And as it comes, you probably don't really need to make very many changes. Now number nine is a little bit less boring. It's gonna be the Kink Cloud. The Kink Cloud is a very flashy color. It's like they dug it right up out of the gold mine. It's gloss iridescent chrome, but it looks gold to me. It has aftermarket Kink Rex bars, which is really cool. The main components are full chromoly. The forks are full chromoly. The frame is full chromoly. Now there's a problem here that we need to touch on is that this frame is not the aftermarket Kink Cloud frame. It's been confirmed many times. People still wanna argue about it. It's not. It's not the aftermarket King Cloud frame, it's just a full chromoly frame. The main difference here is the quality of tubing is probably a little bit lower quality than the tubing they use on the King Cloud and it's probably not heat treated. I don't know for sure what the difference is, but we can confirm that this is not the aftermarket King Cloud frame. But the bars are aftermarket, okay? So you're getting a little bit of aftermarket, taking it a step up from the King Whip or the King Switch. You're getting some aftermarket and that's cool. It looks very nice, it has a steep responsive head tube Angle. It comes with pegs, but no hub guards. Why? I don't know. I don't know, but but it does, okay? So you can grind kind of, just get some hub guards if you buy this bike. I don't know why there's no hub guards, but you can't, I don't know. I didn't make it. It comes with a sealed free coaster, but unlike the Trust, you don't get any options in it. You either love the gloss iridescent chrome and the 21 inch top tube size, or you get a different bike. You can't choose from different options. So the Kink Cloud is pretty limited in that aspect, but it's a good quality bike and it deserves spot number nine on the list because it costs you $750 and scores a 7.4 in quality. Now bike number eight is another Sabrosa bike, but it's not the Letum. It's not the Salvador, it's the Sabrosa Novus, which to be completely honest, I don't like this bike, but the Dugster Bob app and the scoring system put it here at number eight and it knows what it's doing. It's a lot smarter than me. Also, it's available on the App Store or the Google Play Store. You really need to get this app if you're comparing bikes because it's the smartest bike app ever. Anyway, the Novus is on here. And one of the reasons I don't love it is because it's a $1,200 bike, but it only scores a 7.6 in quality. The value is terrible. It's not, a, it's not a terrible bike. I just think it's way overpriced. That's the only thing, okay? But we're focused on the quality. Why is this bike number eight? That's what we're gonna focus on. I'm not gonna cry about the quality. We'll just focus on that. Okay, this bike does have some aftermarket parts. So the main components are full chromoly, the frame, forks, and bars. But the forks are also aftermarket chromoly. So the Kink Cloud had aftermarket bars, the Sabrosa Novus has aftermarket forks. These are the Sabrosa Simo forks. It also has the Sabrosa Big Bitch and Cranks, which are 48 spline aftermarket cranks, and it comes with the Shadow Interlock Chain, my favorite chain. The wheels are solid, it's rolling on double wall shadow truss rims, and overall this is a good quality bike. 7.6 quality is great, it's gonna withstand to any kind of riding that you wanna do with it. It's just way overpriced. But number seven on the list is a little bit less overpriced. Because that bike is from our friends over at Kink who just excel at creating high value BMX bikes. This is the Kink Williams. It's $899, but it scores an 8.4 in quality. So think about that, right? $899, 8.4 in quality. The Sabrosa Novus is $1,200 and a 7.6 in quality. If that doesn't make you scratch your head, I don't know what will, but oh well. Again, I didn't make the bike. The Kink Williams is a high quality BMX bike. This is the highest quality in Kink's line. It comes with four pegs, four hub guards, a free coaster. It, it, it's ready for street, you know, but it also has a responsive geometry. It comes in a 21 inch top tube, a 12.75 inch chainstay, a 75.5 degree head tube angle. This is a responsive bike. It's important to note here that the core components are obviously full chromoly. The frame, forks, and bars, boom, full chromoly. Same thing with the cloud though. 
kink is a little misleading here. They tell a lot of people this is the kink Williams frame and it is a kink Williams frame. It's a kink Williams frame. It's not the kink Williams frame. And that's important to know. This is not the aftermarket Williams frame. Argue with me in the comments, but it's not. Kirk is going to comment and tell you exactly what he said when he was talking to um, kink about this. He emailed kink. Kirk, I know you're going to comment this. Don't let me down. Kirk, please don't let me down. <laughs> anyway, even with that, it's a good quality bike. Getting a little bit more expensive and a little bit more Australian is bike number six. This is going to be the Colony Sweet Tooth. And I have a little bit of a weird bias towards this bike because, well, for many years, I was riding a Colony Sweet Tooth frame. It's an amazing frame. It's still on my bike, my other bike right now no issues at all very strong bike the geometry is a little weird but the frame good frame and that's what this bike is built around it's going to cost 1019 dollars from dan's comp here in the us i think it's cheaper for the homies in australia i don't know homies in australia let me know if that's true and this bike scores a nine in quality so it comes with aftermarket colony sweet tooth frame aftermarket colony sweet tooth forks normal full chromoly bars so you know how the Sabrosa Novus had aftermarket forks but normal chromoly bars. This is the same way. Aftermarket chromoly forks, colony sweet tooth forks, and then just normal chromoly bars. It's a very light bike. It only weighs 24.7 pounds. You can get a free coaster option or a cassette option and this is options. Like I mentioned earlier, I like that you have options. And the parts package is pretty solid with double wall rims, 48 spline cranks, and even female axles on the hubs, which is weird to see front and back both. A lot of We The People bikes are going to have a female axle on the front, but not the rear. This bike has female axles front and rear. It's a personal preference, honestly. I like female axles, but some people hate them. So anyway, that's a real minuscule detail, but I think it's cool to point out. Now this is Alex Heim's signature BMX bike and it deserves spot number six. Now number five is another high quality bike. This is the We The People Revolver. If you watch this video, you'll know that the We The People Revolver is the number one dirt specific BMX bike. This bike has aftermarket parts and a frame geometry that's geared specifically for riding dirt jumps and pump tracks. It's an absolute beast and it's the only bike to score a perfect 10 in the dirt score on the Dugster Bob app. The frame, the forks, and the handlebars are heat-treated Senko Chromali, making it some of the highest quality Chromali that you can find on any BMX bike. This bike is equipped with E-Claw Pulse hubs, which are actually switchable. So you could take the internals out, flip it around, and you can turn your right-hand drive hub into a left-hand drive hub. And that's a pretty cool feature. It has a really solid parts package, like the We The People Logic cranks, the We The People Logic hubs, two pegs, four hub guards, and a ton of aftermarket parts. This bike scored a 9.4 in quality and it's going to cost you $1,247 right now if you can find it in stock. But this is not as much as the next bike on the list, which is the We The People Battleship, bike number four. The We The People Battleship is argued to be one of the best street specific bikes and I'd say it's pretty close. It's going to cost you about $1,250 to $1,300, right around there, uh, depending on where you get the bike from. It has aftermarket We The People Battleship frame with hydroform gussets, Senko chromoly tubing, heat treated, like it's the full package, We The People Battleship forks, and Eclos Strangler handlebars. Everything on here is aftermarket for the most part, and it's just incredible quality. So this bike has two color options, and for some reason the chrome with the red and the blue tire is my favorite color option of all time. I really enjoy this color option, it looks amazing, it's, it's unique, it's interesting, but if you hate that you can choose between the Abyss blue color option. This bike is grind ready right out of the box with a sprocket with a bash guard, two pegs, four hub guards, you'll be able to grind right away. It also has a somewhat responsive geometry which makes it good for riding park but also for riding technical street. You're going to get a steeper chainstay, a steeper head tube angle, and a 20.75 inch top tube. Now I think the Battleship is an incredible bike. One of the best bikes out right now in my opinion, and while obviously it's number four, it didn't quite make it into the top three. But Let's go in and let's talk about the top three BMX bikes that you could buy right now. 
Here we go. Bike number three is the We The People Envy. We The People has shown up quite a bit on this list, but the Envy is one that everyone is talking about, especially with their announcement in 2023 of the We The People Envy Carbonic. So I'm gonna group these two together, even though in my opinion, the Envy Carbonic is a little higher quality than the actual Envy, but that's minuscule. I didn't want the Envy on here twice, yada, yada, yada. So we're gonna put the Envy and the Envy Carbonic together on here, but I'm gonna talk about the Envy Carbonic. The Envy Carbonic has has carbon fiber rims that are tubeless ready. That's right, you can run these rims without tubes. It's really interesting. Everything on the bike is full chromoly aftermarket. It's the best quality you can get. Imagine walking into the We The People warehouse in Germany and just grabbing, oh, I'm gonna get a We The People Envy frame. I'm gonna get We The People Envy bars and just grabbing everything that you want and building this amazing custom BMX bike. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, you don't have to do that because you could just buy the We The People Envy and it's like doing that. The Envy and the Envy Carbonic both come in a 20.5 or 21 inch top tube option. This is great because 20.5 is better for those smaller riders while the 21 inch option opens it up for taller riders. A lot of the bikes we just talked about are only available in a 21 or a 20.75 and it makes smaller riders miss out on the great quality that is available in these bikes nowadays. Another crazy thing is that it only weighs 23.8 pounds and that's the weight of the NV Carbonic, which is again, the very expensive carbon fiber rims. The normal NV with the E440 rims is right at 24 pounds. So you're only saving a teeny tiny bit of weight with the Carbonic rims and you're spending quite a bit of money. So we actually don't know the price of the NV Carbonic, but I've heard rumors that it's gonna cost about $1,600 and the quality score is a 10. The normal NV scored a 9.8 just because of the rim difference, but it's a 10 for the sake of the video. And that is bike number three. Bike number two is from someone we haven't seen on the list yet. Can you guess who it is? That's right, Sunday. The Sunday Dark Wave is number two on the list. I already read it out to you, so you should know. But the Dark Wave is another full chromoly aftermarket bike. Everything on this bike is aftermarket. One thing that it stands out for is the 21.25 inch top tube. This is a very tall top tube for a complete bike. The only bike that's somewhat close to that is a Sabrosa Tyro XXL, which is a 21.33 inch top tube, but the quality on that is awful and it's not on the list for a reason. The Dark Wave, however, is incredible quality. It's gonna come with four pegs, four hub guards, and a 28 tooth sprocket with a bash guard, making it grind ready right out of the box. This is more of a street specific bike with the free coaster and the pegs and the hub guards and everything like that, but you can ride dirt because of the mellow geometry. It's a fun bike with everything on it being aftermarket. Now the dark wave forks, like I said, are aftermarket, but they also come with a lifetime warranty. It also comes with a lifetime warranty on the Odyssey Thunderbolt cranks. This bike scores a 10 in quality, but it's going to cost you $1,349. That's crazy. And now bike number one, the Sunday sound wave. If you were right, go down in the comments and say, I was right. If you were wrong, go down and like the video. Like it if you haven't already. I don't know why, just do it. I never tell you guys to like the video, but just do it. I'm just so hyped because of the Sunday sound wave. The Sunday sound wave scores a perfect 10 and it's gonna cost about the same as the dark wave. The difference here is that the sound wave has the Sunday sound wave V3 aftermarket frame with the 41 thermal lifetime warranty. It has a lifetime warranty on the frame, forks, handlebars, and cranks if you get the free coaster version. The cassette version comes with the Odyssey caliber cranks, which do not carry a lifetime warranty. It comes in a 21 inch top tube versus the Dark Waves 21.25 so this is a little bit better for riders who aren't abnormally tall but are still pretty tall. It has a mellow and smooth feeling geometry setup and pretty much every part on this bike is aftermarket. But one thing that caught my eye is that it has a Sunday Freeze stem. And that's not the end of the world. I love the Sunday Freeze stem but it's a cheap stem. It's like a $30 stem where the Dark Wave had the Brock stem, which is a little bit more expensive. I don't know, I just thought that was interesting. Like maybe they've got to make it affordable somehow. This free stem is not a bad stem. I just thought it was weird that this very expensive bike used a cheaper stem, but it doesn't really matter. This is also a very light bike. It's actually lighter than the We The People Envy Carbonic, weighing 23.41 pounds, I think. You'll have to go on the Dugster Bob app and double check me, but I think this is the lightest BMX bike that you can buy right now. So not only is it the highest quality, 
it's also the lightest bike. The Soundwave, because of the lifetime warranty and the aftermarket high quality parts, deserves spot number one on the list. This is the best quality BMX bike that you can buy, and you get to choose between a free coaster or a cassette. Like, how cool is that? These are all amazing quality bikes that are built to last forever. But they may be the wrong bike for you. There's a lot of things that go into finding the right bike and that's why I do free bike recommendations for anyone who wants them. If you want me to find the right bike for you, fill out the free bike recommendation request and then I'll get you a recommendation back in a day or so with three bikes that are perfect for you. One of these bikes is probably gonna be on there. Like I almost guarantee there's gonna be some of these bikes on here because these are some of the best bikes. But depending on your size, depending on your budget or depending on what you like to ride, you need a certain bike for that and I'll find it for you because I know BMX is really confusing and I don't want you to buy the wrong bike. Like, I don't want you to end up like this guy. Not fun. So let me help you get the right bike, fill out the recommendation request, and comment right now. Just tell me, do you agree with this order? Rearrange it. Let me know which bike deserves spot number one. I'll go down in the comments and argue with you if I disagree. I will disagree. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this video was pretty helpful for you. These are the 11 best BMX bikes that money can buy. Like I said, ask your wife before you buy any of these bikes. We don't want you guys getting in trouble.